Earlier this year, I made a list of the best one-hit wonders in country music, and one of the people on that list that really intrigued me was named Cindy Thompson, who had a huge hit with what I really meant to say, but then ultimately, after one hugely successful album, decided the music industry was not for her and wrote a letter to her fans and left. And reading about Cindy Thompson really got me thinking about other country artists that have left country music, have retired early, or have just fizzled, but for some reason, their careers have just sort of stopped. And these artists are really intriguing. Sometimes they're not one-hit wonders, Wonders, they're two hit wonders or they're one album wonders or they had a few years of real fame but for whatever reason they're not in the limelight anymore. Making it in the music industry for any period of time is an incredible accomplishment and so anyone I cover in this video I want to give them their kudos that's amazing that they did that but today we're gonna be looking at 10 country artists whose careers just sort of stopped. First up is a band called The Wreckers. And it's all right, yeah, I'll be fine. Don't the Wreckers were an American country duo formed by pop star Michelle Branch, who'd already had hits like Everywhere and All You Wanted, and her good friend Jessica Hart. And together they formed this band called The Wreckers that did something that very few women in country music were able to do in the 2000s, which was launch right out of the gate with a huge hit album. Their debut album, Stand Still, Look Pretty, was certified gold in 2006, and it launched a smash single called Leave the Pieces. In 2006, the band was nominated for Vocal Duo of the Year at the CMA Awards, and Leave the Pieces was even nominated for a Grammy. And even though sometimes you'll hear people say that the Wreckers were a one-hit wonder, they actually had a second top 10 hit called My Oh My. My Despite their success, in 2008, the band announced that they were splitting up and were both going to pursue solo projects. And although none of it has been particularly successful, Michelle Branch and Jessica Harp have both released solo albums since then. And they did reunite in 2017 on stage at a Michelle Branch concert to play a few of their songs together. So it seems like if there was any bad blood, it's mostly worked out now. Next up is Chris Cagle. Chris Cagle is a Louisiana native who had a thriving country music career in the early part of the 2000s. Chris Cagle was known for his charismatic vocals on songs like Chicks Dig It and What a Beautiful Day. What a feeling, what a wonderful and his biggest hit and his only number one hit, I Breathe In, I Breathe Out. After his initial burst of success though, his chart performance became a lot more spotty. He split ways with his label in 2008. He signed another record deal a couple years later with Bigger Picture, but none of the songs on that charted. And mixed in with that spotty chart performance were a number of tumultuous relationship issues, as well as a DUI in 2013. While it's unclear how those situations related to his music career, in October 2015, Cagle took to Facebook and said this. I'd like to thank everyone for 15 years of a great time. From Brooks and Dunn to Rascal Flats and fans, I'm gonna miss my band and everyone. All this means I'm going home. I'm going to be a father and a great husband and enjoy my life. I thank you all for everything. And then we've got Jamie Johnson. If it looks like we were scared to death. Like a couple of kids. Jamie Johnson is someone that at first glance you might mistake for Chris Stapleton and I would understand that they both got huge beards They both got great vocals and they both got a certain outlaw attitude hailing from Alabama Jamie Johnson found big success as a songwriter in 2006 writing the song give it away Which became a number one hit for George Strait and in 2008 finding success as a solo artist with his smash hit in color You should have seen it in color the album that that song came from, The Lonesome Song, was certified platinum, and its follow-up is even certified gold. But in the last 10 years, Jamie Johnson has not released any new albums of original material. He put out a Hank Cochran tribute album in 2012 and a Christmas EP in 2014, but Jamie Johnson has otherwise been pretty absent from the music industry, and it's left a lot of fans wondering why. The answer to that question is pretty mysterious. You kind of have to piece together news stories. It appears that Jamie Johnson got into a big dispute with his last label and founded his own label, Big Gassed Records. But it also seems like, and granted, I don't know if this is the case, that Jamie Johnson might just feel a little bit paralyzed and unable to know where to go next with his career. A few years ago, Jamie Johnson told the website KentuckyCountryMusic.com that an injury and concussion from slipping on a patch of ice might be one of the reasons for his delay. I slipped on some ice coming out of the studio one night and I hit my head pretty hard. 
What I found out from a neuroscientist out in Scottsdale, Arizona here recently is that ever since then, my brain has been locked in a hypervigilant state. Anything that isn't directly relevant to survival, it just doesn't focus on at all anymore. Jimmy Johnson is still a really beloved character in country music. You'll see him pop up on an album cover here or in a Miranda Lambert music video there. But whatever the reason for his long delay, there's so many fans that can't wait to hear what Jamie Johnson has to say if he does decide to come back. And then there was the popular trio of sisters from Utah, Shadaisy. At the turn of the millennium, Shadezi was doing really, really well. Their album, The Whole Shebang, had been certified platinum and spawned hits like Little Goodbyes. Little goodbyes. They sang the halftime show at the 2003 Orange Bowl, and they later scored hits like Don't Worry About a Thing and Passenger Seat. Their success was definitely waning as time went on, and they got into a dispute with their label while they were making a fifth album. Their last album, as it stands, was released in 2006, and they just kind of stopped releasing stuff, and it's unclear where the band went. They still post to their Facebook page, but it seems that the sisters are all focused on their private lives. Okay, I just want to acknowledge that this is the part of the video where the tooth I just got repaired re-broke, which is so annoying. And even more annoyingly, it then fell on the floor, and I don't know where it is, but I just decided to keep filming. I'm just acknowledging that my smile is going to be a little jacked up for the next few videos. And then we've got Steve Holy. Good morning, beautiful. How was your night? Steve Holy is a guy out of Texas that had three big hits spaced five years apart. In 2001, he had Good Morning Beautiful. In 2006, he had Brand New Girlfriend. I got a brand new girlfriend. We went and jumped off the And in 2011, he had a more minor hit called Love Don't Run. After about 13 years of sporadic chart success, Holy parted ways with Curb Records in 2013. And since then, he hasn't released any new music. And judging from his social media presence, it looks like he might be happy doing other things. I mean, his website is just an error page. He doesn't post on Instagram or Facebook, and his Twitter just seems to be like a fun dad Twitter. Of everyone in this video, Steve Holy was definitely the most mysterious and difficult to research. And then we have Buddy Jewel. Carolina, down to Georgia, smell the Tasman. You might know Buddy Jewel as the winner of the inaugural season of Nashville Star. He actually beat Miranda Lambert for the title. Following the success of the show, Buddy Jewel released two huge hits back to back. One called Lacey's Song, Help Pour Out the Rain. When we get to heaven, can I taste the Milky Way? And the other one, Sweet Southern Comfort, both which reached number three on the chart. His self-titled album with Columbia Records was a gold hit, but the follow-up album didn't have any hit singles and he was promptly dropped from the label. Buddy Jewel has been very fastidious about making music and to this day he's been cranking out new albums, but his time as a major star has definitely waned. In 2013, Buddy Jewel told the Nashville scene, as it is with Nashville, you're only as good as your last project. I've actually had to pray to God to give me the willingness to forgive some people for making some bad decisions about my career. Still, Buddy Jewel says he's really grateful for the success that he did have, and I am sure he is sitting at home, releasing new music, and happy to be counting those residual royalty checks that still come in from his two big hits. Next up, and one of the most famous cases of a career that just stopped, is Bobby Gentry. I was out chopping cotton and my brother was bailing hay. Bobby Gentry was a country star in the late 1960s who most famously sang the song Ode to Billy Joe. Ode to Billy Joe is a song that finds a young narrator reflecting on the suicide of a local boy who jumped from the Tallahatchie Bridge. Not only did it win the Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal, Bobby Gentry also won Best New Artist at the award show that year. Three years later in 1970, Bobby Gentry wrote a song called Fancy. I remember it all very well, looking back, it was the summer I turned 18. That was a minor hit for her, but would go on to become one of the most iconic country songs as performed by Reba McIntyre. Over the course of the 70s, Bobby Gentry continued to have a thriving music career, but by the early 1980s, she'd lost interest in performing. She made her final public appearance at 40 years old at the ACM Awards in 1982. And ever since then, she's not recorded or been interviewed or had a desire to be in the public eye. There's even conflicting reports about where she lives today, whether it's in a community in Los Angeles or in Memphis, Tennessee. Maybe just like in the plot of Ode to Billy Joe, Bobby Gentry has a flair for mystery. Then I want to talk about Jimmy Wayne. I love you this much, and I'm waiting on Jimmy Wayne was a really buzzy country artist, active from about 2003 to 2009, that had hits like Stay Gone and Do You Believe Me Now. So do you believe me now? I guess I really 
A big part of Jimmy Wayne's life and a big part of his music was his tumultuous raising in the foster care system. His father abandoned him at a young age, his mother was in and out of prison, him and his sister were sometimes in foster homes, and when Jimmy Wayne's career started to wane, and when he parted ways with his label in 2010, he had developed a great platform that would let him advocate for the people in the foster care system. These days, Jimmy Wayne is a national spokesperson for CASA, which is a volunteer network that cares for neglected and abused children. He's an author that has written books like Paper Angels about Salvation Army's Angel Tree program, and he's also a motivational speaker with a focus on kids in the foster care system. And so while not everyone can have a career that spans decades, you can have a career that gives you a platform that leads to the next step of your life and, hey, three top 10 singles along the way. Charlie McLean was a popular country singer from the mid-70s to the mid-80s that had hits like Radio Heart, Paradise Tonight, and probably most famously, Who's Cheating Who in 1980. And yes, in case you're wondering, that is the same Who's Cheating Who that was then covered by Alan Jackson 17 years later, who had another hit with it. Still you wonder who's cheating who, and who's being true. Much like Bobby Gentry before her, after about 15 years of hustling in the music industry, Charlie McLean decided that she preferred spending time at home with her husband, and she retired from all public appearances and performing in the early 90s. And then to wrap up this video, let's talk about the band Perry. If I die young, bury me inside. The band Perry and their separation from country music is a well-documented and eternally confusing phenomenon. After some extraordinary crossover success with their southern gothic anthem, If I Die Young, they went on to follow up their album with more hits like Better Dig 2 and Chainsaw. Still, after two hugely successful country albums, the band Perry decided they wanted to spread their wings into a poppier direction. and thus began a series of whiplash-inducing rebrands with new color schemes and new outfits and new hairstyles and totally new musical sounds. Some days it was minivan mom pop and songs like Live Forever. Other times it was completely tasteful and beautiful bluegrass-inspired Glen Campbell covers. They also released songs like Comeback Kid and Stay in the Dark, and they were teasing songs from an album called Heart Plus Beat that never actually came out. All of the back and forth led to a split with their label, Big Machine, and they have since moved out to LA and pursued a much more electronic dark pop sound. I love the band Perry, I love their instrumentation, I love their harmonies, I loved their writing, and it feels like they're selling themselves short by making this type of music to me. But I have to say, I respect their desire to go full tilt into this direction. It is clear that for some reason, it is important for them to go do this as a band. But it's very clear that they have not achieved the same level of success and that the vast majority of their audience has not followed them on this journey. If nothing else, it is a strange, weird, fascinating story from the past decade of country music history. So there you go, that is today's list. Those are artists whose country careers just sort of stopped, even if they pivoted in new directions. Let me know if there's anyone else that you would include on this list. Don't overthink it. This is not me shading these artists. It's just me saying kind of how it is. But give this video a like, share it with someone who might enjoy it themselves, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys soon with a bunch more country music stuff.